Oh. Houston, we have a problem. Where has this been my whole life? It's beautiful. Yo, everyone, it's Godfrey. Hey, hey, it's Seppi, and I'm challenging my friend Godfrey to make some Persian slash Iranian food for a day. I'm challenging my friend Seppi to make only Filipino meals for a day. Meals I've selected for Godfrey are for breakfast, he'll be making noon barbari with a glass of chai. For lunch, he'll be making kuku sabzi. And for dinner, he'll be making lubia polo with tadik. The meals I've chosen for Seppi are for breakfast, Seppi's going to be making the staple bread of the Philippines, which is pandesal. Then for lunch, he'll be making arroz caldo. For dinner, Seppi will be making beef caldereta. This is going to be a fun one. Let's go! Pandesal is Filipino bread rolls and is an absolute classic that can be enjoyed for breakfast. First off, get a bowl, put some warm milk, melted butter, and egg, and some instant yeast, and give it a good mix. Add the rest of the dry ingredients and just mix it up. Once you've mixed it up, let it rest for a good 20 minutes. Ooh. Then you sprinkle some flour on a counter and you knead the dough until it's smooth. Once it's smooth, put it into a bowl and let that proof for about an hour. I have someone to introduce to you. Mazo baby. It is literally doubled in size. This is probably bigger than my face. Hello. When it's good to go, get the air out and cut it into small pieces. Then you want to shake them into little balls when you're using your palm. Then you put them into the oven for a good 20 minutes and let them rise. Eat them when they're fresh out because that is when they are banging. Ooh, that is how you enjoy and cook pandesal. I just want to say I'm so excited to try this pandesal and I genuinely want to mush my face into this. I know I've seen people have this with just butter in the middle, so I'm going to try that first. Ooh, here we go. First bite. Cheers. Mush it, John. Mm. What's really amazing? If you like Persian breads, we are not really known for super fluffy bread rolls like this. Mm. I'm gonna be a bit cheeky and just do a quick try and put some like Nutella and peanut butter in it. Mm. Mm. Hit it out the park. I'm not even just saying this. I feel like if you put anything in this, it seriously just would level up. Noon barabari is a common flatbread and it's very, very good to get first thing fresh from the bakery. I'm looking at the recipe already and I'm, I'm like, what? Add the yeast and warm water to a bowl. Then mix it until it bubbles up a little bit and then let it rest. All right, so the next bit is... Add salt, it's quite nice. warm water, oil, then add your plain flour, mix that and knead away. Oh, oh. Is that kneading? I'll let that prove while that's heavy up. Now you should see a huge amount of dough. Press down to lose the air, then divide the dough and let it rest again. Time to make a quick glaze for your bread, which is simply plain flour and water. Oh, look how smooth that is though. Stretch out one half across the tray oh. and gently make holes or a line across it. Then apply that glaze. Time to sprinkle the sesame seeds over the bread. Let the bread sit in the bubble rack for about 15 minutes until you have a golden brown toe. Ooh, look at that. But time baking and it came out all right, eight. Enjoy with some feta, mint, and some chai. All right, so let me just try the bread first. Oh, it rips apart nicely, actually. Mm. I can eat this by itself. It's got a nice punch to it in the middle, so soft. Sesame seeds have a nice shot of shit. Let me try this one. Feta. Cheers. Whoa! Oh! This wasn't too hard to make. My arms hurt already. Ow, oh, how, how, how? But the combo with the feta cheese? Oh! So good. I'm ready to go to a Persian breakfast shop and just try one of these and get it fresh and oh! Arroz caldo is basically a chicken rice porridge. This dish takes me back to when I was young, when I was a kid, and my mum would make it all the time. You want to dice up some onions, some ginger, and some spring onions, and of course, being Filipino, you need hella garlic. Houston, we have a problem. I broke the garlic crusher. I use these mussels, you know? Then get your pot and add those ingredients in and saute them for a little bit, and get your chicken in there, let the chicken get a good sear. Then you want to add your glutinous rice and get some water and let that come to a boil, and leave that to boil for about an hour. The chicken should be nice and soft, so you take out the chicken, shred it, and then you can add it back to the bowl. So while that's boiling away, you get a new pot and you fry the rest of the garlic. 
And once that's nice and golden brown, get a bowl and you can serve it up and then sprinkle some of that fried garlic on the top. Add, you know, half a bowl of egg to it. That would do. Just want to say the eggs need some work. I know, I know. It's not you, Adol's Caldo, it's me. Okay? Okay, thanks. And that is ready to go. Okay, we're here. I have been the most excited for this dish. I think because it's the most different to anything we sort of have in Persian cooking. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, 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 wow. That is like flavor overload it's so good what i already love is the crunchy garlic bits on top it just like elevates it so much do you know what i can imagine this is like amazing for if you're not feeling too well or if you just want a really hearty meal like when the rain is falling outside and the wind is kind of breezy i just took like a bite of the ginger now that 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 makes the dish do you know what I really love about Arroz Caldo? It really feels nostalgic. It just feels like a big warm hug. Thank you, Godfrey, for putting this on the menu. Like 10 out of 10 for everything so far. And I'm pretty sure dinner is gonna be the same. Iranian food is known for being very aromatic and this is a grand example. It's basically a Persian herb frittata and it's really good for vegetarians. I've never used so many herbs in my life. Look how much. Chop your onion and your leek very finely. Some people like to use lettuce in their cooker sabzi, but you know, each their own. My favourite part, time to chop up all the herbs. How's my chocolate, Seppi? And just so you know, the kitchen is going to smell so amazing. Smells so good. This will definitely be probably the healthiest thing I've eaten in a long time. Cook the onions and the leeks just so they soften up nicely. Then add your eggs to your herb mixture. And then it's time to add salt, pepper, turmeric, fenugreek leaves, and a bit of baking powder if you want. Then fold the leek and onion in and give it a good mix. Oh, I can't wait for it to be cooked now because if it tastes anything like it smells, oh, I'm excited. Then it's time to whip out your frying pan, put your mixture in and let that fry yes. for about six to seven minutes. Do me proud. I'll be back. If it's still a little bit jiggly on the top, feel free to pop it in the oven for a minute or two just to set it. And now it's time to flip. Seppi, how am I supposed to flip it? What, the, the pancake way? Oh, no, it can't be that way. Oh, Ooh, look at that. Back on the pot and crisp up. And then you're done. And you've successfully made kuru sabzi. Nushe jang. And this is my kuku sabzi. Look at that. It's time for this. Let me cut it and see what the inside looks like. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. No Mmm. It's got everything you need in it. It's got like the herbs, the onions, and it's got the egg. So it's kind of like an omelette -y kind of texture. And you just feel good when you eat it and it tastes delicious. Thank you, Seppi. This is so good. By itself, it's really nice. I don't feel like you need anything with it. This is amazing. And you know, especially if you're like trying to eat more veg, this is the way forward. I'd definitely make this again. For sure. Beef caldereta is a beef stew with vegetables. You really can't get this dish wrong. So to start, you wanna saute your onions, your garlic and tomatoes till they're nice and brown. Then you add your beef to the pot and let that cook for a bit and let it brown before you start covering it up. So far, it smells so good, just like all the other dishes I've made. And I can't wait to let this like sit and rest for a bit. And I feel like it's gonna become so juicy and flavorful. And I just know it's gonna taste so good. After a while, we'll add the tomato puree and the liver patty and give that a good mix. You wanna add the rest of your vegetables, your potatoes, your carrots, your peppers. You wanna let it cook and boil until the veg is nice and soft and ready to eat. But yeah, you can literally have it by itself or with rice or whatever carb you want, but beef caloretta. You can't go wrong. It's really cold as well at the moment, so I feel like this is the perfect dish to enjoy right now. So cheers, bon appetit. Mmm, mmm, oh my gosh. I really let the beef stew for a long, long time and it's made it so melty in your mouth. Also, I had the idea of bringing one of the panda salad rolls I made earlier because I just thought it'd be a good idea to dip in the stew. Hopefully I'm not doing a disservice or anything. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm, mm. As we always do in our household, we always have rice left over from like the day before or two. I'm gonna try a little bit with the rice as well. Mm, mm, mm. I feel so happy. 
I can tell these dishes are like a labour of love. And I think that's one thing I can say about Persian food too. And I can see that in common with all the dishes I've been making. I genuinely don't know what else to say. It's just blown my mind. This is absolutely delightful. I thought I'd give this dish to Godfrey because it's a bit more of an introduction in how to make Persian rice. A lot of the time when we make rice dishes, we make taddy, which is an absolute must. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's time for dinner. It's time for me to put my crocs into sports mode. This one's going to be a tough one. <laughs> First of all, most importantly, I cannot emphasize this enough. Wash your rice. Make sure you do this until the water's clear. It's about five washes in. Time to let it soak. Now chop up your green beans into small pieces and get rid of the ends and then boil them. Finally, chop up one onion and then add your lamb. Now it's time to boil your rice. Boil it until it's al dente. I think that's done, you know. Then add your salt, pepper, turmeric, cinnamon, tomato paste and mix. Add your cooked green beans and then put that to the side. And now it's taddy time. Put your pan on medium to high heat. Add a little oil or butter. Add a bit of saffron to the base and swivel the pot so it all mixes. Ooh, let that swirl around. Pack the base of your pot tight with rice. Make some holes in the rice and add a little bit of butter. Add your lamb and green bean mixture to the top. Put enough to cover the first layer of rice and then add another layer of rice on top and mix. Oh, look at the colour. Now, I'll give it to you, folks. Then cover the rice and leave for 30 minutes or more. I hope and I pray I've done it right. <laughs> Check the rice. If the grains are fluffy and cooked, that means one thing. It's time for the taddy flip. I've never done this before. Whoa! Ah! Ooh. Place a big plate over the top of your pot, put one hand on each side and confidently flip. I don't have a plate big enough for it. This is the biggest plate I've got. Two, three, four. Okay. Ooh. Ah! Ooh, look at that! I did it! You did it! And now it is time for you to enjoy your lubia polo with your tadik and your side of yogurt. Enjoy! Time to taste it. Okay, it's dinner time and it's time for some lubia polo tadik. Oh, oh wow. Oh, it is crunchy, yes. Look at this. It still remained crispy on the top, which I'm actually surprised. So this is my first time having tadik ever. Nushe Jan. Whoa, where has this been my whole life? I used to avoid like the really crispy bits of rice, but like this, this is banging. Apparently I'm supposed to enjoy this with a bit of yogurt. Mm. Whoa, what? This works so well. If you haven't tried this before and you love rice, you gotta have this. It's got me my favorite thing today. I love this, I love it. So Godfrey, how did you find it? Wow, cooking Iranian food was fun. It was my first time ever baking, so making bread like that was tricky. <laughs> it got stuck to my hands a lot. Yeah, I saw. Okay, how, 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 how? And how did you find cooking Filipino food? Oh, I loved it. Honestly, I'm still kind of like, why have I never made Filipino food before? I know I'm gonna make it loads of times more because I loved it so much. So Godfrey, what was your favorite to eat? And cook. I think my favorite thing to cook and eat was the kuku sabzi because it was like literally a fresh bunch of ingredients that I've never cooked with before. So it opened my eyes to some new flavors and a new way of cooking. Going into this, I was actually the most excited to make the arroz caldo because I think it was the most different to anything I really make. I am absolutely obsessed with ginger. <laughs> something I've like learned throughout this whole process. I mean, I, I'm glad you enjoyed the Filipino food. I definitely enjoyed Iranian food. Yeah. Um, I hope I haven't butchered any of the recipes. No, or the I hope I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you've got places that we should visit or suggestions to try, please let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Peace. We did it, we did it. All right, great. Hold on, let me just check if I was recording. Oh, <laughs> don't say that, Godfrey, please. I oh, know I was. I was.